Welcome back to the channel guys. My name is Lance with One Too Many Hobbies. And in today's video, I'm gonna show you how I host my poker tournament. So without wasting more time, let's get into today's video. So tonight's game, there are 27 people on the seating chart. 25 or 26 will show up for whatever reason, someone always forgets. I have enough tables and chairs and poker chips to host a poker tournament for four tables and roughly anywhere between 32 and 36 players. I like to seat eight uh, or nine. I really don't like to seat 10 on each table, it's crammed. Um, these are 10 person tables, but it gets crammed. So I like that eight or nine for a tournament, makes it more fun and more enjoyable. That's why we do this. And occasionally you'll make some cash. There's no right or wrong way to host a tournament, okay? There's more efficient ways to do it. I'm gonna share how I do it. I think it's very efficient. I've been doing this for three or four years now. So I host poker about every six to eight weeks, and it's a good spread from tournament to tournament where people are ready to play again because it's been long enough, and it hasn't been too fast where I'm hosting that much. We do an $80 buy-in. $80 is not a lot of money, but for some people, it could be a decent amount of money. It's that sweet spot that I found that it's worth to come out and play and have a good night. And if you win some money, it's a decent amount. It's also enough money, in my opinion, where you know you do a $10 or $20, people are just bluffing and they don't care, it's $10. $80 to me is that sweet spot where people aren't playing sporadically and poker is more consistent. I do unlimited rebuys until the dinner break. And at the dinner break, we do an optional $20 add-on for a 5,000 chip. We do 10,000 starting stack, and I do a 2,000 bonus chip for showing up, paying, and registering early. Now, let me tell you, before I implemented the 2,000 bonus chip system, people were showing up late. As soon as I implemented the bonus system, I tell you what, everybody's here on time. Cards are typically in the air between 5.30 and 5.40. The chips that I'm using, I'm using Chinese clay majestic card room chip. My breakout is five 500 chips, 12 100 chips, 12 25 chips, and I have six 1,000 chips. I do a 20 minute blind system. We'll dive into the computer and my software and my uh, blind structure here in a little bit. Now the next thing I wanna talk about is the cards. The one thing I do recommend is getting a nice set of 100% plastic uh, playing cards. These are Copac playing cards. Uh, if you get water on them, they wipe off. They're just, they just work. Um, they're a little bit expensive on the front end, but I've had these for a couple years, no issues. The other thing that I recommend is a cut card. Not every dealer is created equally. Uh, we have dealers that struggle and we have dealers that are really good. If someone needs a two of spades, well, they know it's at the bottom. Put the cut card at the bottom. So invest into a nice set of plastic playing cards, get a nice set of tournament chips, both cash and tournament. The next thing I wanna talk about is drawing seats. Tonight we have 27 players on, this, on the uh, seat list. How I draw seats is I take an old deck of uh, cards, right? These are from New York, New York. They've actually been in circulation because they've been chipped off. I pull out uh, 27 cards, right? Um, effectively, I pull out um, all the diamonds, one ace through nine in diamonds, spades, and clubs, okay? And what I do is I will go through and take the king of the diamond, the spade, and the clubs, and I will set the, the king on each table. This will be the diamond table, that will be the spade table, that will be the club table. The next thing I'm gonna do, since I'm the host, and I sit right here, this is where I sit, because I like to be have vision of everything in case someone busts, in case somebody wants a rebuy, if I need to move people around, I wanna have good vision. I'm the host, I get to choose my seat, okay? I pull out the ace, of diamonds because the king of diamonds is this table. I set that right here as a host. So I do, the ace is gonna be the dealer and the ace is going to be the person that chooses their seat first. They choose their seat and then it follows by 
two of diamonds, or well, in this scenario, two of diamonds, three of diamonds, four of diamonds, and we go clockwise. So again, after you set the kings out, you'll set all the remaining cards face down. And you'll be like, all right, guys, it's time to play cards. Everybody come draw a, uh, draw a card for their seat. So they're gonna, this person drew a card, two of diamonds. They're gonna go next to me. Six of diamonds, so three, four, five, six. So he's gonna be right here, six of diamonds, right? Three of diamonds, okay? Now, if it was a club, they would go to the club table. If it was a spade, they would go to the spade table. This is how I've been drawing seats for my poker tournament for four years. Get an old deck, make it easy, okay guys? We will start with 27 tonight. We will play down to 18. Now, when we go from three to two tables, what I do is on the smaller table, I would go up and I'd be like one, two, one, two, one, two. That table is one, this table is two, you guys fill in. I don't redraw, I don't redraw for the button, fill in and let's keep playing. Okay, now, when we get down to the final table, we play to 10. That's where I will take time because people might have no chips or they might have a lot of chips. I think it's beneficial for the tournament director to redraw. So I will get out ace through 10 and I will throw it down and everybody that's still in the tournament will draw their seat. The same thing applies. The person with the ace is going to choose their seat and they are the button. And they will play until uh, there's a winner, or in my tournaments, I let people split. If you wanna play the final final table or final four, and you wanna split the pot, by all means, that's on you, okay? Uh, we play a cash game after the tournament. Now, as a tournament director, speaking of cash, if I'm in the tournament, I am not the banker that night. That's how I do it. Now, I have players that have been playing with me for four years that show up every six to eight weeks. They're good friends of mine, I trust them, okay? One of the three guys that comes all the time that have been bakers in the past, if they are busted and they're waiting to play, they will be the banker. And the banker sits right here underneath my chip drawer. I will share my chip drawer set up here in a second. This is where I'll have all my cash. It's lockable and they can disperse the cash. It's up to them if the cash is short that night. Typically, if it's short, it's rare that it happens, especially since I got this chip drawer but it's rare that it happens if it's short 10, 15 bucks. So there's four people up in a night. We just eat it uh, evenly, it makes it easier. We are humans here, human errors uh, happen. But if you put things in place, you can prevent things from happening. I've seen it personally happen to me over the evolution of my tournament and my cash games. I didn't used to have two sets of chips and I had issues early on. Have a cash set, have a tournament set. All right, so I use a MacBook Pro linked up through HDMI to my TV that's displayed above my refrigerator. That's a nice good visual for everybody here to see what the timer's at for the next blind. And I use a simple, it's called the Poker Timer. It's a software or application that you can buy online. I think I paid $19.95 for it four years ago and I've been using it ever since. Okay, then hit continue. And here's my, here's my structure, okay? My blind levels never double, meaning if it's 400, 800, the next blind level is not gonna be 800, 1600. To me, that's a turbo and 20 minutes is that sweet spot. 15's too fast, 25's too long. We start about 5.30 and we're done around 11-ish, 11.30. And I'm gonna go through these real quick with you guys. You can see them on the screen right here. 50, 100. 75, 150, 100, 200, 150, 300, 200, 400. We play five blind levels, 100 minutes before our first break. Our first break is that dinner break, and that's where the rebuys, the unlimited rebuys stop, and the add-on option is, uh, begins, or you have the option to add on. This also break is the only 30-minute break I have. You can see here, okay? I do a 30 minute break at dinner because it gives people time to eat the pizza, relax, mingle, have a drink. And I go into my office, I have my clipboard with 27 buy-ins, 10 rebuys, 23 add-ons. I punch all that into my Excel sheet and bam, just like that, all of my uh, payouts are dispersed. There's a little bit of math that I have to do to make it even numbers for 20s and 10s but very simple. And then I'll continue with the, the blind levels here, 300, 600, 400, 800, 500, 1000. After the dinner break, people start to fall off around here. 
if you're at a thousand for a big blind, you start with 12, that's only 12 big blinds. So if you haven't made any moves, you're kind of locked right there. After this second break, I start to pull off uh, more chip. Dinner break, one of my co-hosts will go through and pull off all the 25s. As I'm doing the payouts in my office, he pulls out all the 25s and starts to color up some chips. This second break, I will pull off a lot of the 100s and I will start coloring up to the 1000s, if not the 5000 chip. After the second break, we're gonna start getting down into the second table. There's only gonna be two tables at this point. 1,000, 2,000, 1,500, 3,000. I'm gonna skip a few here, but you can see nothing really ever doubles. Um, and then this level 18 is a 10 minute break and that's a color up, it's a bathroom break, it's a phone call. It's whatever you need to do. And I just try to color up. The cash game is typically kind of up and going at this point. On level 18 after that break, you're gonna get into 5,000, 10,000, okay? you're gonna go to 6,000, 12,000, and then I'm just gonna fast forward here, but the tournament is typically over around this level 21 or 22. Now, if there's 600,000 in circulation of chips in play after rebuys, regular buys, add-on, all that stuff, 20,000 is only a handful of blinds. What is that? I don't even know what that is, but it's a handful of blinds, not that many. Typically around 11.30, the tournament ends. If not, they've split by that time and people come over to play cash game. Typically when they are splitting or there's a champion, the cash game is at seven or eight, if not 10 players already, and some people will wait for someone to bust before they can get in. But here, you just hit continue in this software. I skip all the entries. I don't do that. I do that on a pen and paper. I don't do any of this as well. I don't do any of the prize payouts. And then the next thing is hit okay. All right. Here we go. Let's get ready to play some poker. Let's play some poker. So very simple. Again, I will close out this and I will close out that because I don't use it. This is what you see. Look, very simple. This is displayed on my screen on the TV. Next break is in 99 minutes. If I have to, I can stop it for whatever reason, to go over a rules thing scenario, to go over whatever. Five, four, three, two, one end of round and honestly guys that's probably the best feature of this 1995 software i highly encourage you to use a timer and have a blind structure if you're hosting a tournament my very first tournament i went off my phone and it was a shit show to say it lightly okay so invest into this it will uh, be worthwhile in the long run I got this chip drawer off of Amazon. I'll have the links down below and the video of me installing it down below if you're interested. I have this preloaded before guys start showing up for the night. And how I have it loaded up is I have my bonus chips already preloaded. There's 27 players on the seat chart tonight. So I have 54 preloaded bonus chips. The bonus is 2000, like I said earlier. The other thing that I have loaded up is $5,000 chips. And this is for the add-on. We do a $20 add-on that is 50% of your starting stack. Again, like I said, highly recommend it. Very effective, players like it. The last thing I have loaded up for the tournament is my rebuys, which is a $5,000 chip, four $1,000 chips, and two $500 chips, totaling 10,000 for the rebuys. And I have 10 of those. So that way, at the end of the night, when I'm ready to tally up how many rebuys I had, I know what it is. If I have to, I'll pull from these and give somebody uh, two $5,000 chips real quick once I'm out of 10 rebuys. The last thing I preload is my cash chips. Here in the back, it's hard to get to. You actually have to link it, but it's fine because it kind of keeps people's sticky hands off it, which I've never had an issue. But anyways, I've got my $20 chips laid back here. Um, and then I have my workhorse, which is $5 chips loaded up and then occasionally the hundreds will go into play um, occasionally. What you don't see in here is my $1 chips. Um, I don't have them in here. We keep them in my lock drawer. And um, uh, like I said, the $5 is the workhorse. So when I first started hosting poker tournaments, I used to store all my chips in this cabinet when we weren't using them in circulation for tournaments or cash. And my first or second or third tournament, I had some mishap with the cash game. And that was on my fault. I think it was human error on my fault, but more importantly, I was using the same tournament set chips for cash and tournament. Do not, I mean, do not do this. Get a separate cash set chips for cash and get a separate chip set for tournament. Spend the money, trust me. The next thing I did was I invested into a little 
lock system. It's a magnetic lock system. It's really made for cabinets in your kitchen for babies. And again, I have this on me at all times and I still use it. I store my $1 cash chips in there and then my leftover tournament chips I store in there as well. Again, my game, it's an honor system as far as getting into uh, our Facebook group. You have to be uh, vouched for from a player that's already here. So it's friends of friends. We don't have anybody in here that nobody knows. It's someone's uh, vouch for them as a friend of a friend. If you want to see how I host my cash game, I'll have that video right here. And if you want to see how I install the drawer underneath my poker table, I'll have that video right here. Thanks for watching, guys, and we'll see you in the next video.